Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Macro Tech Developers Q2 FY24 earnings call, conference call hosted by Antic Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an, op an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand over the conference over to Mr. Biplab Deparma from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Deparma. Uh, thank you, Malcolm. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the Q2 FY24 earnings call of Macrotech Developers Limited, hosted by Antique Stock Broking. Today, we have with us the management of the company, represented by Mr. Abhishek Leba, Managing Director and CEO. Mr. Shushil Kumar Modi, CFO, Mr. Rajiv Das, President, Eastern Power and Navi Mumbai, and Mr. Anand Kumar, Head, IR. Without further ado, let me hand over the call to Mr. Loha. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are a few days from Diwali, so wishing all of you a very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year ahead. To begin with, let me share my thoughts on the uh, broader uh, circumstances, both globally as well as uh, on the macroeconomic side. Uh, the emergence of the new conflict in the Middle East is a source of global concern, both for humanitarian as well as economic reasons. We pray for all those who are affected and hope that things settle down soon. In spite of the continued global turmoil, India continues to make steady economic progress in what is clearly a very volatile period otherwise. We had, after initial concerns, a very decent monsoon, and reports indicate that the food production is at a record level, and consequently we are starting to see uh, that food inflation has abated and is likely that it will continue to abate. India has recently been included in JP Morgan's Emerging Market Bond Index. It is further expected that other peer indices will also follow, and consequently, significant inflows can be expected in India uh, from, uh, uh, in the next year. RBI, in its latest monetary policy, has reaffirmed the GDP growth rate of 6.5% for FY24, making India the fastest growing major economy in the world. The RBI also indicated that interest rates at this time are, have peaked, and unless there are significant uh, black swan events, uh, the interest rates are unlikely to go much uh, to go higher from where they are today. And that gives us con confidence that if things do not turn adverse in an unforeseen manner, then there is likely to be a starting of the rate cut cycle sometime next year. India, of course, continues to be a beneficiary of the China plus one trend, and manufacturing continues to gain momentum, giving the second leg of the job creation engine in addition to the strong and continuing uh, services engine, which India has historically relied on. Just as India continues, it, continues its journey of being a steady ship in troubled global waters, our focus as a company is to deliver steady growth while continuing to reduce risk. The quarter was marked by steady progress on our key goals, pre-sales growth, debt reduction, improved ROE, as well as strong performance on ESG and reputational metrics. In Q2, which is otherwise seasonally the weakest quarter of the year, we had our best ever pre-sales, which came in at about 35.3 billion. INR. That led to strong cash flows and our net debt came down by INR 5.4 billion, now down to 67.3 billion. Our adjusted EBITDA margins uh, are uh, for the quarter on an underlying basis. The embedded EBITDA was at about 32 and was at about 30 percent, uh, which again showcase the strong continuing profitability of the company. Our ROEs on an underlying pro forma earnings now continue to move towards the high teens. 
it's a very proud moment to note that the globally recognized GREB ranking rated us as the number one residential developer in Asia for our ESG standards. Similarly, S&P Global Corporate Sustainability Assessment rated us as number two in the world amongst real estate developers. It is indeed a very proud moment for us that an Indian company is now number one in Asia and number two in the world on globally recognized ESG indices in the real estate space. As we look at the concerns around climate change, and more specifically in our major cities around air quality and pollution, it shows that it is very much possible in India that we can operate at the highest standards of ESG and still continue to deliver long-term sustainable growth. As a business, we continue to remain on track for our annual guidance on pre-sales, on embedded EBITDA, as well as on debt reduction. And we hope that we will exceed our guidance on business development. H1, as you generally know, is a period which tends to be around 45% of the annual performance, and the second half of the year tends to be more stronger with a festive season and generally more predictable weather patterns. In H1, we generally plan for a lower level of activity, particularly launches, due to the unpredictable nature of the monsoons, the timing of the monsoons, as well as you know when you would have certain monsoon events. And of course, you have impact to a lesser extent of summer vacations and sometimes the inauspicious Pitrupax period. However, the Pitrupax period has moved to Q3 in this year. Thus, H2 tends to be about 55% of our overall performance for the year, and it, is, it, it, it contributes an even bigger percentage of the operating cash flow. We are pleased to note that the new market that we entered last year, Bangalore, we plan to start our sales now with the launch of our first project in the month of November. Our journey in Bangalore, we hope and expect, will follow our trajectory in, in Pune, early stages of focusing on building a strong brand, delivering product, understanding the local ecosystem, and building the local team, and thereafter scaling up in a meaningful manner, as we have been able to do in Pune now. Our business development pipeline continues to remain quite strong. As you would have already noted, we've delivered about 80% of our AOP already, about, 14, uh, about 143 billion out of a guidance of 175 billion. And we expect that this robust business development pipeline will continue. And we continue to see good deals across multiple locations, which continue to aid our supermarket strategy of being present across at every three to five kilometers in the key cities that we are focused on. During this first half of the year, our YTD price growth, that is from 1st April onwards, was at about 3%, squarely in line with our guidance for the year of price growth of between 6 to 7%, which is 2% below the likely wage growth, which will be between 8 to 10% for white-collar workers who tend to be the home buyers. We believe that this continued focus on strong affordability and making sure that we have nominal price growth, but at the same time affordability does not take a hit, is a very, very critical part of our strategy. And that is an important reason, uh, uh, we believe, which will lead to long-term sustainability of the super cycle, which we expect to be 15 years of housing growth, uh, and we are only in year three of that. And making sure that pricing does not get too aggressive, price growth does not get too aggressive, is a critical ingredient to ensuring the longevity of the cycle. Another point that I'd like to make is that our journey to have the PNL more accurately reflect the period's underlying business performance has commenced now with the sales after 1st April 2023 being eligible for revenue recognition uh, under the percentage completion method. Over the next three years from the start of the journey, i.e. by fiscal 27, we expect the PNL to be reflecting the underlying business performance. Uh, quite quite well, perhaps at the most with a quarter's lag. It's important to note this year, uh, in this quarter, that our current quarter's revenue recognition is only about 17 billion, whereas the pre-sales are at 35 billion. And yet, most of the overheads which were incurred in this quarter have to be accounted as expenses in this quarter itself. Therefore, for the next few quarters, the best indication of our business performance are the pre-sales and embedded EBITDA 
uh, metrics that we have historically shared with you. I'd like to focus on a few highlights of our for sale business. Uh, uh, we uh, intend to have about seven to nine new launches over the next six months, worth uh, launching about 8 million square feet, worth 12,000 crores uh, in a variety of markets. Uh, uh, this provides significant visibility to achieve our targeted pre-sales growth for the year. In terms of the new micro markets, and I'm pleased to have our colleague Rajiv Das, who leads the uh, growing market in uh, eastern suburbs of Mumbai with us today, and he'll share his share thoughts separately. But in terms of the new micro markets that we've entered over the last two years, let me share a few highlights. Pune, uh, we've achieved, uh, we achieved pre-sales of 1,100 crores in fiscal 23 uh, with four operating projects. And in the first half of fiscal 24, we've already achieved 960 crores of pre-sales. Uh, we expect to cross 2,000 crores of pre-sales for the year and have strong confidence that not only will we emerge among the top three developers in Pune by the end of this fiscal, but we can further continue to strengthen that journey and double our pre-sales over the next, uh, further double our pre-sales over the next three to four years. Similarly, both in the eastern as well as western suburbs of Mumbai, we are seeing strong growth in patterns. We now have five operating projects in four locations in the eastern suburbs. Our pre-sales in the eastern suburbs have the, in, the, in the first half were at over 800 crore compared to 1,200 crore that was uh, for the full year of fiscal 23. As I already mentioned, we are now targeting our first launch in Bangalore in the month of November and hopefully a second launch in the last quarter of the year and if not in the first quarter of the next fiscal. In terms of some select projects, I'd like to highlight how the strength of the Loda brand, our focus on high quality product, and the desirability of, of what we create leads to significant consumer attraction uh, uh, as we start operating at new locations. At Matunga, uh, which we launched in fourth quarter of fiscal 23, uh, we've already sold close to 700 crore in less than nine months. In Atheri, uh, we've sold uh, more than 50% of the launch inventory within nine months. Uh, in Hinjavari, again, uh, we've sold in seven months since launch more than 500 crores, which is 57% of the launch inventory. And similarly at Karadi, we have cumulatively sold about 800 plus crores in just 10 months, which is about 64% of the launch inventory. At Pune and IBM, not only have we seen great velocity having sold more than 70 750 crores, just under 70% of the overall sales. Uh, but we also expect to see that the first projects, uh, that the first hours will complete in the next calendar year. Thus, uh, one sees that not only are the new locations contributing to sales, but also we are progressing with deliveries. And this combination of strong brand, strong sales, and strong deliveries, we believe, will set up the flywheel effect which helps us expand the business, but also keep margins robust, as we saw also in this quarter, where the underlying EBITDA margins were at about 30%. Uh, I'd like to uh, highlight uh, a little bit about the land that we own in Palawa and how land values have been moving. Uh, at the time of our IPO, the estimated value of the underlying land, this is not the residential land, but land that one would sell for industrial or other purposes, was at about two and a half crore rupees an acre. But now uh, we have transactions which are happening upwards of five crore rupees an acre, and we expect that this number will further inch up north of six crore rupees an acre. This is the benefit, of course, of having a high quality ecosystem, well planned infrastructure as well as the fact that consumers, as, a, as those who are setting up their warehouses and industries have recognized the benefit of being within the larger Palawa ecosystem. And obviously, uh, over time, we expect this to further grow as other asset classes come in. And hopefully, we should be crossing the 10 crore mark sometime over the next 24 months. Uh, and that kind of underlying value of the land uh, will, uh, uh, will, uh, will create significant free cash flow for the company. 
the beneficiary of all this activity is not just the cash flow that we generate from the land, but is also the demand that gets generated for our developments, which are located close to these industrial and warehousing developments. Uh, in spite of the substantial increase in mortgage rates, Malawa continues to see strong traction from consumers. Uh, we uh, are also starting to upgrade and premiumize the product that we are offering so that we have a broader mix of consumers that are staying over there. And that is complementing the number of different asset classes which are now operating in the Palawa ecosystem in addition to residential, including office spaces, high street retail, multiple schools, two hospitals which are now under development, life sciences uh, and research R&D facilities and so on. Uh, we obviously, you know, see these the, the effects very clearly. You have a situation where a hospital is coming up and the doctors who are operating in the hospital want to buy a plot for a villa or build or buy a high-end apartment and so on. So the, the effects of the ecosystem, we believe, are quite strong. And as the infrastructure in the area completes, some of these projects have gotten elongated beyond our earlier estimates. But we expect that a number of these will now start completing, including the Aroli Katai Naka Freeway, which should uh, reduce the travel time from Aroli down to 20 minutes in a predictable manner and to BKC in 45 minutes, which should be completing now anytime in the next six months. Uh, plus, of course, the Navi Mumbai Airport, the Trans Harbor Link, uh, and uh, the Thane Dombivili Link Road. This project which will complete a little bit further in the future, uh, but later in this decade, include the Metro Line Number 12, which have three, which, which, of which three stations are located within Palawa, the Mumbai Ahmedabad Bullet Train. Uh, for which construction is in full swing. And the first station after BKC is just a short drive from Palawa, maybe five to 10 minutes drive from Palawa. And generally the overall infrastructure upgradation. So we believe that Palawa as well as Upper Thane will benefit from these dual forces uh, of infrastructure as well as job creation, which is happening in a meaningful manner in those areas. Before uh, we uh, dive uh, uh, and I hand over to Rajiv. I'd like to uh, reiterate the fact that we continue to see strong home buying interest and momentum on the ground. Uh, we continue to see meaningful increase and improvement in conversion rates over the uh, last uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, activity is strong across different price points. And there is a clear preference for buying branded homes high quality homes where quality and product and lifestyle come first and price comes second, which of course gives increasing purchasing power uh, to us. We believe our journey of being a steady player, focusing on steady growth, predictable growth, is something which will hold us in good stead. We continue to remain focused on delivering 20% compounding, 20% uh, CAGR in pre-sales and about 20% ROE, uh, uh, which uh, we believe helps uh, us uh, deliver on the mandate of being a steady, predictable, but high growth company. Uh, with this, uh, I'll pause now and hand over to Rajiv for his remarks in relation to the Eastern suburbs, which he uh, leads. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Good afternoon, everyone. The Eastern suburbs spanning from Matunga in the south to Murund in the north consists of at least 10 plus distinct micromarkets, each with its unique characteristics. Historically a residential area, the region has undergone a remarkable transformation in recent years, driven by substantial infrastructural development. This transformation has made it an ideal market in terms of affordability, connectivity to all major business hubs of the city, and access to increasing social infrastructure. These developments are set to enhance the business and the residential desirability of the region, strengthening both volume and price growth going forward. The market offers a wide range of opportunities from mass housing to luxury condos. The eastern suburbs represent a substantial primary market of about <coughs> 20,000 crores of sales and it has grown at a CAGR of approximately 12 to 15 percent between FY21 to 23. On the back of strong industry consolidation, desirability of our products, as well as Lodha's commitment to quality and timely delivery, we have witnessed very strong growth in the market. Having started the region as recent as the second half of FY22, we achieved over 1,200 crores of pre-sales in FY23, which was our first full year of operation. 
For the current fiscal year of FI24, we are aiming at, for at least a 40 to 50 percent growth over the previous year, which translates to around 1,700 to 1,800 crores in pre-sales. At the end of H1, we are already at 800 crores and are well poised to meet this target. By the end of the year, our, our footprint would have increased to five to six operating projects in various locations of eastern suburbs, such as Mulun, Hawaii, Vikroli, Sayan Matonga, and Bhandu. Furthermore, the robust demand for our projects and products has allowed us to increase prices by about six to seven percent annually, which is in line with a pricing strategy of modest and digestible price increase which is at least 200 BPS below the white collar salary growth, keeping the affordability strong. Our goal in the next few years is to expand our market share to 20%. To achieve this, we plan to add two to three projects in our region annually, as per our supermarket strategy of having non-competing projects within three to five kilometer radius to ensure the presence of our brand in each of these 10 plus distinct micro markets. We already have a robust pipeline of new opportunities some of which are in advanced stages of discussion, and these projects will be launched in the upcoming financial year. Regarding our organizational structure, we operate with a decentralized system in which each regional CEO is responsible for managing all business parameters within their respective region. The Eastern Suburb region currently has around 200 plus associates across various departments of sales, construction, customer experience, design, marketing, strategy, and property management. Given the region's accelerated growth stage, our people's strategy is to create a healthy mix of experienced Loda associates from other projects and new hires to support our continued expansion. In conclusion, we are committed to achieving our ambitious growth targets in the Eastern Suburbs region. With our strategic approach, strong brand presence, and a pipeline of exciting opportunities, we are well poised for success. Allow me to stop over here and hand it over to Shri. <laughs> Hi. Perhaps we can uh, we can move to the Q and A. I know whomsoever would have queries or clarification to seek. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while using while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you so much and congratulations on good numbers. Can you talk a bit about uh, the experiences that you are uh, having in terms of business development in, in cities like Bangalore? Uh, what kind of IRR are you uh, expecting from the projects there and how is the competitive intensity in terms of BB there? Hi, Puneet. Uh, look, uh, frankly, Puneet, uh, in the scheme of things for Macrotech, as you know, Bangalore is something that we are more, you know, in the pilot stage at this point, not really looking for aggressively adding projects. So, just from a Macrotech standpoint, perhaps it may be a bit of a, a early to speak about, but nonetheless, you know, whatever at least we are doing, uh, uh, our IRR thresholds for typical JDA that we have always mentioned would be kind of 30% plus. We haven't seen any significant challenge as of now uh, getting there. Yes, there are good number of brand case, uh, you know, already existing. So henceforth, it will be uh, wrong to say competition won't be there. But equally, you know, the sizability, uh, if you see alongside the competition, perhaps, you would be able to appreciate that as we move on and as we now launch our first product, uh, you know, sometime in this month, in the month of November, we mm -hmm. will get to hear how the people has received and thereby what kind of potential that lies ahead of Macrotech going forward, be it in terms of the consumer sales and thereby by default, you know, getting our raw materials land higher. And, and within Mumbai, in terms of business development, uh, would you focus on JD? JD, or are you also 
looking to become more aggressive in in the society redevelopment project etc any thoughts sir I mean, frankly, from our standpoint, you know, these dynamics of redevelopment, JDA, all these are in some sense less relevant. For us, okay. all is in some sense one and the same. What we really look forward is that the we we should be looking for a land which we have the ability or that provides the ability to launch the future, be it the redevelopment, be it the JDA, you know, on a, a clean land. Uh, it doesn't matter. what matters is the size of the project which delivers the certain return threshold in absolute terms as well as on the margin terms and thereby the irr so long those are deliverable and it can be something that can uh, be quickly brought to the market which is because that is what brings the return right so that those are the ingredients that we will typically look for correct but society redevelopment is slower to launch to market so would that fit into your scheme of things or would you Rather avoid that and go for other projects which can be quick to launch from the time you require. No, as I said, so long quick to launch ingredient is pretty much there alongside the return threshold. We don't make any distinction. Understood, understood. That's helpful. And lastly, on your FY24 launches, um, uh, are they looking broadly on track? There was pretty much nothing this quarter, right? I mean, uh, second half looks to be heavily loaded in that case. That's how one should read it. yeah we tend to want to do as much as possible in the second half because especially q2 tends uh, has this monsoon unpredictability you don't want you know the launch to time a launch at a weekend when you know monsoon throw the city out of gear so we typically yeah. tend to plan it in the second half of the year not saying that we don't do anything in the first half of the year but it tends to be more loaded to the second half of the year and yes i think uh, in terms of our launch pipeline for the second half it all looks Uh, reasonably uh, 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 in place. Obviously, the ones which are planned for March uh, sometimes can slip to an April, but it looks to be all all in place. Understood. That's very helpful. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi. Uh, so I have a few questions. So first is, you know, this impact of you know the BMC order on pollution and all. Do you think uh, this impacts your construction spends uh, at least for this quarter? Hi, Sarab. Uh, the BMC's guidelines have been around for uh, for some time. Uh, uh, we are, uh, I would say, largely compliant with them. uh there are going to be certain supply chain issues which have not yet cropped up but there is a likelihood of certain supply chain issues cropping up if they stop the transportation of uh, heavy uh, vehicles within the city in order to control uh, the uh, uh, the pollution related issues yeah that is a, a contingent event if the air quality reaches a certain threshold which they classify as severe uh so at this stage i would say is that there is uh, no whatever has come so far there is no impact on our construction schedule or spend but there is a downside risk in case the uh, 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 the air quality crosses that uh, threshold that has been uh, stated to be severe okay understood uh the second uh, is essentially you know uh, so you talked about this eastern suburb so we are seeing a lot of infrastructure come up you know the navi mumbai airport the trans harbor link um, the early connectivity which you spoke about so if we have to imagine what happens let's say two or three years out would you expect let's say the differential in pricing between where palawa airoli bell trades versus let's say where andheri east core gaon kandi valley Belt to trade because the relative infrastructure is higher in eastern suburbs. Should that differential start to narrow down because the differential today is like more like three to four x? Uh, uh, so, sir, so I think you know uh, uh, we we see that pricing uh, at any location are driven by two things. One is quality of life, and second is the length of commute. uh uh palawa has been uh, very uh, well received on when it comes to the first metric which is quality of life which is the reason why it enjoys a premium over other projects in the micro market and where we expect to have substantial upside benefit coming in terms of pricing is now the length of the commute length of the commute is in minutes in time terms uh, yeah. uh which is how a uh, consumer thinks about it uh so yes i think uh, over the next few years and i think it is incremental right because you have the eroli tunnel for example opening 
then the trans harbor link may happen to become really active maybe 6 to 12 months down the line then you have you know the uh, metro train uh, kicking in probably towards the 27 28 and then you have the bullet train from vkc which is scheduled to complete in 2029 or uh, 2030 for this leg so every one to two years you are going to see that the time it takes from palawa to the main epicenters of the city is going to continue to come down and you know as that happens and you combine that with quality of life what you are saying is very very highly likely to come true okay and so sir uh, uh and uh, uh lastly on your pune uh, strategy so on pune you know uh, so two things are you doing more jda or are you doing more own and secondly uh, like how would you say that you are differentiated from competition because pune has a you know pretty decent set of developers operating there for a long time so you're doing large format townships more high end development so just kind of more thoughts on your strategy in pune thanks uh uh pune in terms of land acquisition obviously our strategy is jda led uh, generally our strategy is joint development led because that's where our roes are uh, are higher and that sort of you know as we get to this mix of uh, about 40% of our sales coming from jda which should happen you know by the end of this fiscal or sometime next fiscal then we will sort of start becoming more balanced as a mix of jda and outright so that strategy sort of keeps Uh, uh sort of uh, evolving in line with market opportunities as well as how we are looking at it at a corporate level uh i would uh, back to differ with your point of view in terms of you know how our brand is uh, perceived versus what the existing competition in pune is i think the loda brand is perceived in a much higher light by the uh, by the pune consumer as in terms of the quality of the design the quality of the product and the service standards and uh, i would say this for both pune and to an extent for bangalore is that there are good good players who do what i would say uh, mid end product uh, but when you talk about product which is lifestyle oriented value added uh, i think loda uh, has a big lead in the consumer's mind uh, in terms of what what it brings to the table okay okay maybe i'll take this off and just one last question uh, sushil uh, what is the total now left from uk is it over now or is there any balance left no as we said uh, last september that 1100 odd crore was yet to uh, what to come of which 550 has already come the rest 550 we are expecting potentially in this financial year anytime but that will come this financial year and we should once for all kind of get out of the uk okay thank you sir thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of kunal from bofa please go ahead um thank you my first question is that you know during the quarter there were media articles saying that regulations and procedures around society redevelopment could be simplified so abhishek would you view that as an expansion of opportunity for more business development or would you also view that as potentially lot more supply that can come into the market uh our view uh, kunal uh, is that you know supply and regulatory changes are areas which don't really impact uh, the uh, the business cycle in any significant manner uh, simply because ultimately it's about what product does one build and who's building it and whether the consumer is comfortable with both of those the simplification of society redevelopment procedures or or for that matter any other easing of of you know uh, uh business uh, environment is very welcome because it improves productivity for whoever is involved in it uh we uh, you know we have done uh, uh, some society redevelopment or tenanted property redevelopment in the past we are open to exploring it in the future too uh so uh, you know it's a it's a source of supply i think the great thing about mumbai is that supply is always there and available in different forms and that is what allows mumbai to operate at a scale that it operates at much bigger than any other market in the country because the supply is available consumers can get what they want uh, 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 and uh, that i think is 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 you know uh, good for a long term healthy uh, market and also uh, uh, it reduces the incentive for excessive price growth because supply keeps coming to the market yeah got it 
Okay, and, and then just a follow-up here is that, you know, there are a lot of divergent data points in the market right now on how fast exactly is the MMR market growing. So, you know, what would be your assessment that on your projected bookings growth of almost 20% for the year, uh, are you gaining market share? And, I mean, the spirit of the question is, do you sense that the number of market participants are increasing because the cycle is in an established strong phase right now? Our market share uh, uh, growing? Uh, certainly. I think we certainly believe that our market share is growing. And I think that has to be seen from the context, not just from the sales growth, but also from the fact that as we increase the number of locations in line with our supermarket strategy, there are unaddressed markets in the past which we are now addressing and therefore automatically share growth uh, uh, is, uh, is happening. I think the uh, fact is that the top five developers in Mumbai have less than 25% market share as of last year. And therefore, there is, you know, a lot of room to go on consolidation. There is also, you know, space for new entrants if they so wish to enter, to enter. Uh, now, what happens to those uh, new entrants and how they perform, time will tell. I have no view on that. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I think top line as well as bottom line uh, are uh, areas which uh, one has to look at closely as one enters new markets. And that's why when we enter new markets like Pune earlier and now Bangalore, our focus uh, is on not just top line, but also on making sure that the bottom line comes through along with that and execution comes through along with that. So I think there is room for uh, for for, uh, uh, for Mumbai uh, to to support you know one or two or three uh, players who want to enter from outside Mumbai. But we don't see that competitive intensity is in the manner that you are stating it because we believe that the business has moved from being a commodity to being a branded business. So it doesn't really matter you know uh, how many people are selling cell phones. There is Apple and then there is Samsung and then there is everybody else and that's how we we believe real estate is also moving to. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Safe from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on uh, you know, very strong performance. Uh, first uh, is, uh, you know, in terms of micro market performance, if I see South Central had a very good quarter. Uh, you know, was it specific to any particular project uh, because we have been hearing certain transactions in uh, media or do you see, uh, you know, this improvement across projects uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, people's preference for larger homes and how do you see this uh, trajectory uh, for South Central as a market, uh, you know, going ahead? So you're right that South Central Mumbai in the first half of the year and particularly in Q2 has done quite well. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's probably a story which is similar to uh, uh, to other markets. Where you add locations, you have growth. Uh, plus, we are seeing price growth in existing locations. And to an extent, we are seeing volume growth also in existing locations. So this time in South Central Mumbai, you of course had the Voltas and Park uh, contributing, but you also had Loda Malabar contributing, you had Loda Bellevue contributing. So, as you know, so I think we see that generally the market in, in South Central Mumbai is very deep. Uh, we are by far the most uh, desired brand in this market, and as we bring in supply, uh, you know, uh, we, we expect to continue to see the momentum grow. Uh, there are, you know, probably two new locations we'll add in the second half of the year within South Central Mumbai. Land, of course, is already acquired and approvals are in place. Uh, so uh, we expect that this momentum continues for, uh, for, for, for some time. You know, you can have quarterly ups and downs, but generally uh, uh, what we see across our business is out of our 20% growth, you know, about six, seven percent will come from price. Of the balance, you know, five percent, five, six percent will come from volume growth in existing locations, and then six to eight percent will come from volume from new locations. And uh, in different measures, that's a story which is now playing out in South Central Mumbai too. But any pricing strategy in South Central Mumbai would be different from. Uh, the other markets because of, you know, higher propensity to pay, uh, you know, for the customers. So, uh, would it be different? I would say is that, again, and this was, I, I answered it in a different context, but I'll say it again. Uh, you know, pricing strategy that we have is to have, to charge a premium to competition. 
because we believe we, we deliver the best product and the best service and there is, you know, people get the best lifestyle and we have no problem in, in being, uh, you know, a premium to the market. And that's, that's really our pricing strategy across the board. Having said that, when it comes to price growth, we are conservative. We believe that, you know, once a project is started off and a pricing is established, uh, just because there is demand, one should not go ballistic on price increases uh, because affordability is a key consideration. So our pricing strategy is pretty similar uh, across, uh, uh, across markets. There is no exception because South Central Mumbai has a higher propensity to pay because I think uh, consumers across the board want great value. Uh, value is a combination of price combined with what product and service one is getting. Sure, got it. And uh, second on, you know, your JD is, uh, it has been like two and a half years now since you have been doing uh, these transactions, that's really, uh, you know, JD is. Uh, any change in terms of, uh, you know, landowner expectations that you have seen uh, during this period? Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, how are we tackling it, if at all? I, uh, 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 we believe that the JDA pipeline uh, and the JDA dynamics can be evidenced by the level of business development that we've done uh, in the first half of the year. Uh, our, uh, we believe that Loda's attractiveness as a brand, what is attractive to the consumer or what is attractive to a lender is also attractive to the landowner, which is strong governance uh, and great execution capability. And uh, in that context, we continue to see healthy pipeline. Uh, I would say the pipeline is sometimes, it is a lot bigger today than it was 18 months ago. And consequently, we can afford to be picky uh, and choosy about uh, what transactions we do and uh, making sure that the margins that we target, which is 18% uh, in Mumbai in terms of PBT and ROEs in excess of 30% on these JDAs can be delivered with, with room for error. Sure, sure. Uh, that helps. And just lastly, on your digital infra business, uh, while well, you mentioned that the uh, you know, pricing have increased to five crore per acre now, uh, uh, and, and since last few quarters, I mean, uh, the volumes have not been as big as what probably we have been mentioning, uh, roughly 600, 700 crore kind of a target every year. Uh, so is pricing uh, becoming a bit resistant now for people who are you know looking to buy a land uh, and probably once the infra comes up uh, that time we will see more volumes and transactions or uh, you know how do you see the volume of transactions that is happening now is it uh, you know uh, uh, in line with your expectation or maybe it can improve in future um. In terms of, uh, you know, I would like to clarify a few things. Our digital infrastructure business is our warehousing and industrial parks business, which yeah. we develop warehousing and industrial parks, you know, initially in Palawa, and then we are now doing uh, across other locations. Uh, what you are referring to in terms of land value is macrotech developers selling land to third parties, which would include our uh, digital infrastructure partners or platform also. So I just wanted to distinguish between those two. Uh, the, uh, in terms of the land uh, uh, sales and land momentum, as you can imagine, it's chunky. Last year we sold 140, uh, 100 plus acres in a single transaction uh, to, uh, 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 to a warehousing development entity. And obviously, you know, that takes them three or four years before they're able to fully monetize that. That's the nature of the business. Uh, we uh, see right now that the uh, momentum uh, on land sales is reasonable. Uh, you may have read about the fact that we've recently divested of a subsidiary uh, to a, a company uh, which is uh, focused on building uh, 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 logistics and uh, solutions called New Cold, uh, which is a globally renowned coal chain logistics company. We've just uh, announced a transaction for 1.5 billion INR. The transaction will complete and funding should come this quarter. So we're, we're, we're quite, uh, you know, uh, quite in a good space when it comes to the quantum of land that we want to transact. The, the piece which is not necessarily, uh, I would say, uh, uh, you know, predictable is the acquisition that the government does for its infrastructure. So in the last fiscal, there was more acquisition done by the government for its infrastructure. This year, there has been lesser. It's dependent on what their priorities are and so on. So sometimes that number varies around, but what is sold to the market, uh, I think is, is moving quite well. 
Sure, that's that's helpful. Uh, that's it from my side. All the best and happy Diwali to you and your team in advance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Abhinav Sena from Jeffries, India. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh Thanks for taking my question. On um, see, first question is on cash flows. Uh, so we seem to be uh, trending well on our guidance on net debt for the full year, and uh, you've already alluded to second half being much stronger on inflows. Um, so if there is an uh, you know a bit of a surplus here, what are the strategy we are looking for? Uh, how to utilize that cash flow? We uh, do expect that the reduction in the second half of the year will be uh, debt reduction will be higher uh, on net debt and as Susil also mentioned we expect to receive about 550 crores uh, from the UK in the second half of the year so that will also help. Uh, uh, having said that I think you know it's a net debt number uh, uh, we of course look at our business development uh, opportunities on a ongoing basis uh, but you know it's possible that net debt might be slightly lower than uh, in, at one point and then go up in the next quarter if you know it's gone below where we want to be. So that, that's a you know normal part of the business because business development opportunities or opportunities to deploy this capital uh, don't necessarily come in the same time frame as the cash flow uh, coming in. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, while we paid out our first dividend last year, we expect to increase our return to shareholders also over time, uh, either in the form of dividends or other means. Uh, so, you know, all of those things will be considered by the board uh, at the right time. Okay. Uh, so secondly, on uh, the township side, so sales momentum on residential, uh, you know, despite the uptick we are seeing broadly, and also the infra improvement, it seems to be flattish in the first half. So, uh, A, I mean, what will you sort of uh, ascribe that to? And also, I mean, do you think some government intervention is needed for this segment now? I, I think, you know, uh, uh, the overall performance of the extended eastern suburbs for the full year uh, will be meaningful growth uh, over last year's number. Last year we did about 19 billion, and we expect that number to be, you know, uh, growing meaningfully, uh, crossing 23 billion or thereabouts. So we have meaningful growth uh, when it comes to uh, we expect meaningful growth when it comes to the uh, uh, the sales performance in the extended eastern suburbs, in spite of the impact of the increase in mortgage rates. In terms of that segment between 30 lakhs and 75 lakhs, uh, where uh, the sensitivity to mortgage rates is the highest. Uh, clearly, uh, there is uh, you know some impact on on demand there, and uh, any intervention from the government which supports sort of these people who are buying their first home, starter homes, uh, would be welcome. Uh, we of course all read some news reports in that regard, and if that were to come through, come through, that would be I would say the right thing from an economic perspective because housing not only creates an immense amount of employment but it also creates wealth for those who own homes. And therefore, to get the families onto the housing ladder as early as practical, especially when we've had this increase in interest rates for reasons which are global in nature, nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, things these families have made choices on. It would be, I would say, a positive intervention if it were to, uh, were to come. Uh, we, we, of course, uh, uh, you know, hope it, it happens, but uh, let's see. Thanks, uh, Abhishek, and all the best to the team. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Kumar, Head Investor Relations, for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Viplab. Uh, in conclusion, I would only say that, like, reiterate the point what Abhishek mentioned, the demand conditions on the ground remain very robust, and the early read-through of the festive season is quite encouraging. Uh, with this, uh, we conclude the call. Uh, I would like to thank all of you and wish you uh, for all the festivals that we are to see now. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Antic Stock Broking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.